Okay. The following video is filmed. The following video was filmed on the 5th of March 2021, two days before Harry and Meghan's interview was seen by anyone. In the interview, from start to finish, Meghan was acting. The world is waiting on the biggest interview of the year. Were you silent? Is this like, is this the biggest year uh, interview of the year? What the fuck? I mean, it's kind of cool that like the, the people are this much uh, this into it. Like, it's kind of weird, but. Or were you silence? Harry and Meghan with Oprah. Everyone has an opinion. A bit of a gold digger. It's very sad that the relationship with his brother has changed. I don't think their marriage will last. But no one has actually seen what Harry and Meghan have to say. Instead, the airwaves are full of royal experts influencing public opinion by giving their views into the soap opera of the decade. You just think, could there be a more inappropriate time for all this to be blasting out in public. But do these experts actually know what they're talking about? Bitch, how can they wait for one member of the royal family not to be in hospital when they're all 800-year-old vampires, okay? Going forward, there's always going to be at least one person of the royal family in hospital, okay? That's going to happen. Like, it is a normal process, okay? Being racist and being in the hospital all the time is just a part of British royal family culture. Sorry, they're old as fuck, okay? If you're a vampire, you're going to spend a lot of time in hospital. And yes, I'm saying in hospital because that's how the British say it, okay? Going forward, this is how it is. It is, it is certain, of course, I'm, I'm so sorry. Let me just once again uh, 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 hand back uh, to you, Ben. Would these paid commentators give a review of an interview they've not yet seen? Wait, what the fuck? These guys are... Wait, I love these guys, by the way. These, these fucking South African dudes, they're so funny. They absolutely destroyed Katie Hopkins before. It's, th it's those guys, right? We proved that royal experts lie about Harry and Meghan. Would these paid commentators give a review of an interview they've not yet seen? To put this to the test, Archie and I set up a production company, Beneath the Fold Limited, to invite four royal experts onto a fake TV show to give their reaction to Harry and Meghan's interview three days before they had even seen it. We found some royal experts and used our very own royal expert to gauge their interest. We a special for a UK broadcaster to be broadcast immediately after the interview that Harry and Oh my God, they're... This dude is so good, dude. Yo, he just put that on, dude. He just put that accent on like fucking Hitman. Agent 47 puts on uh, an article of clothing and immediately can fucking blend in. That's insane. What? Dude, that is... No, that's his voice? Oh my God, he talks like that normally? Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, that is... That, that is a hate crime. That accent in and of itself is so posh that it is just automatically classist and racist, okay? Anyone who talks like that is literally just like, well, I don't understand. I mean, yes, my family owned a bunch of mines in Rwanda, and they still do, and, and I see nothing wrong with this. I... What do you mean? It's not, it's not child slavery. It's not child slavery. It's actually... Enterprising individuals learning at a young age technical skills that they need to know for a better tomorrow. We are job creators, my friend. Megan have given CBS with Oprah. And yes. we're looking for guests to comment on the interview, basically. Um, so it will be pre-recorded, so we will, we're actually recording it uh, tomorrow. And it's just to offer kind of an immediate reaction to the interview that will then go out after the interview, if that makes sense. Within minutes, the Queen's former press secretary, Dickie Arbiter, the editor of Majesty Magazine, Ingrid Seward. Majesty Magazine, dude? Dude, how fucking pathetic is your life? That you're, you're, oh my God, who buys it? Like, what is the subscription? Like, who's like, oh, I need to subscribe to Majesty Magazine. Oh, I absolutely love Majesty Magazine, bruv. It is my favorite uh, periodical. Oh, you do not understand. I love reading 
about the royal family and majesty magazine dude british people are so weird holy shit royal commentator richard fitzwilliams and cnn's victoria arbiter all agreed to offer their instant reaction to an interview that had i'm sorry there's a lot of anglophobia happening today i'll just shit on like the danes in a little bit or something to just make up for it okay look they couldn't take over your island they tried so you know you guys still won even though you blew a 13 colony lead, you, you still won in that regard. You have to own a monocle to get a subscription. This is awesome. Not shitting on Americans for once and shitting on the British for once is pretty fun. Like, I, I'm actually enjoying myself with this. Okay? I know Amer Americans finally get one off, okay? We sit here every goddamn day and watch British people joke about our country... Because we don't have fucking healthcare and it's really fucking weird. And all of a sudden we get an opportunity finally to feel a little superior. <laughs> the Americans didn't even actually beat England. They were distracted and everyone else shook hands later. Hadn't even broadcast. The experts were happy to act as if they'd already seen the interview. Their fees were negotiated and their contract signed. Had these professional royal experts who influenced the public already made up their minds about Harry and Meghan's interview before seeing it? This is what happened. Ingrid Seward is the editor of Majesty magazine. Have you ever read Majesty magazine? No, but neither has anyone else, so yeah. that's all right. We're going to be doing a post <laughs> analysis of Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah, which is obviously coming out in a few days' time. My name is Victoria Arbiter, A-R, B as in boy, I-T-E-R, and I am royal commentator for CNN. Richard Fitzwilliams, royal commentator. Ingrid Seward, I'm editor-in-chief of Majesty magazine. Like, I'm sorry, dude. You, you shouldn't be able to live in a house like this if your job is like a royal commentator like i don't know if this is just because they're british their house looks so fancy i'm just looking at the paintings but like what is this this is like I, I, as an american this strikes me as like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar painting just as soon as i see the as soon as i see the corners on this shit as soon as i see the frame on this i'm like what is this like are you living in a million dollar ha a mansion like by just talking about Your replies, homie. American conservatives defending the monarchy's next little big brain. Liberty Hangout replied to me. Ew. Monarchy rocks, though. You make millions talking about shit all day, though? Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it turns out you can do that without fucking, you know, uh, defending the monarchy or uh, being a monarch. You know what I mean? Turns out you that can happen, too. You Americans care more about this than the British do? Yeah, fuck off. There's no way, dude. There is no way that the British people do not care about this. There's no fucking way. Royal commentator. Ingrid Seward, I'm editor-in-chief of Majesty Magazine. You, you've not seen the interview yet, have you? No. No, great. I think we have a fair idea of where... Boys, I've recognized that as a concern... Or, sorry. Americans are like... Americans be like... American conservatives be like... Yes. Why, yes, I am a conservative in 1776. That's what they've decided to be. Like, literally, American conservatives are American conservatives in 1776 now. Where the interview's going, and we have a fair idea. Yeah, you do, yeah. definitely. Okay, great. Um, are, you, are you ready to go? Brilliant. Okay, let's go. What was your overall impression of the interview? I think that this was an extremely hard-hitting interview. In the interview, to my mind, this was an actress giving one of her great performances. From start to finish, Meghan was acting. Do you think, looking back now, that Oprah went rather soft on Harry and Meghan? I think the interview was really um, an iron fist in a velvet glove. She did ask the tough questions. She had to ask the tough questions. It was not a balanced interview. But at the same time, I think she did ask those questions in a sympathetic uh, light. Oprah is a friend and gave them an easy ride. And certainly favoring Harry and Meghan. She was totally... You can literally do this, like, it's great. You can just be a commentator. If you're a good commentator and you work for CNN, by the way, as a royal commentator, you can do it without watching the subject matter. You can do it without the subject matter being released because that's how fucking, uh, you know, that's how pre-prepared your answers are. You already have your genuine uh, predisposition. 
You already have your fucking uh, biased point of view, and that's it. Sympathetic. And there is a great deal in it that the palace will find deeply concerned. Were you surprised in the interview to hear Meghan's comments about Prince William? To hear her talking about members of the royal family didn't surprise me at all. I think she was very unwise to do it, but she's the kind of woman that, you know, wants, wants her say. Meghan used extremely strong language to describe her relations with members of the royal household. So having seen the interview, what do you think it said about Meghan's relationship with the Queen? I think what it said is Meghan's relationship with the royal household was not very good. The interview told us that Harry and Meghan uh, both greatly admire the Queen, but not the institution. Meghan spoke about her love of animals. Obviously, in the interview, Meghan talked about the Balam Donkey Sanctuary. W what does that tell us about Meghan's character? Meghan talked about her love of animals, love of dogs, love of the Donkey Sanctuary. In the interview, the, the, the nicest thing about Meghan... Did they do that? Did that actually happen in the interview? They're making it... They're making this shit up, right? It turns out their acting is fucking better than Meghan Markle's. Uh, was that she, you know, it's her love of animals. She does have a love of animals, but that's only one side of her. That's a domestic side. Mm. Yeah, we've, got to, we've got to look at the broad picture, and the broad picture is not a very pretty one. If we could speak to. Why? Like, it, oh God, it, this is so grimy, dude. I mean, I guess, what do you expect? You're going to people that literally make a living off of. Uh, like criticizing or, or having an opinion on the royal family. Do the words that Meghan used in the interview to describe Prince William and the brotherly rift. Um, what did you make of that part of the interview? In describing the brotherly rift uh, as they did in the interview, you can't help but be incredibly moved, stunned, saddened by all of it. Meghan Markle saying she won't take the vaccine in the interview. What was your reaction to that? I think it's very selfish. Um, you know, there, there are people who are anti-vax. So now that we know what has been said in the interview... <laughs> what? Do you think this is going to play are well? Are you fucking dumb? Oh my god, these people are so bad, dude. This is so awesome. This is absolutely positively awesome. Seeing as, uh... Megan coming out as an anti-vaxxer is, is, is dastardly. Absolutely oh, disastrous. For Harry and Meghan. There wasn't a real need... Do you Wait. think this is going to play well or badly for Harry and Meghan? There wasn't a real need to go into so much detail as to why they were unhappy as members of the royal family. Brilliant. I think that's everything, really. So then... I love that. Dog, your entire job is supposed to be a journalist investigating and, def like, talking about the royal family, but you're... Like, your positioning in this made-up situation is that you're against them coming out and giving information about the royal family. It's very strange. It's very strange to be like, why are you talking about the royal family, I say, as the main journalist for the royal family? There you have it. Four leading royal experts willingly commenting on something they know absolutely nothing about. Perhaps when it comes to Harry and Meghan, there's more to the story. Why was this interview necessary? So weird, go. These guys are so good. They always do like incredible fucking shit. The, the Katie Hopkins one made me a fan of uh, Josh Peters and Archie Manners. They're very, very good at what they do. I will tell you, they're very, very good at what they do. And this is what they do best. It's debating uh, all the bravs. All the bravs all around the world.